Hi guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make these very adorable flower bookmarks. And you could also use these as a bag charm. I have a bunch hanging from my bags. They really make for a perfect accessory. These are very quick and easy to make and I think that if you're a beginner, you'd still be able to make them. And they make for a perfect gift. They look so adorable. I mean, like, look at them. Look at this little bee right here. So as always, if you make any of these, I would love to see them. So these are my socials. Make sure that you either tag me or send me a picture of your creation. Please consider subscribing. I have a whole bunch of videos and tutorials coming out this month and you wouldn't want to miss them. I know this video is a little long, but I've included three tutorials on how to make the three different kinds of flowers as well as different add-ons like the little leaf and like the bee and like the strawberry and stuff like that so feel free to skip to any part that you'd like i have all the timestamps down here but i'm going to start off with a tutorial on how to make a magic ring as it is a crucial skill to make all the flowers and their little add-ons so let's get on to the tutorial Before we get started, a skill that you need to make all the flowers that I show you in this video is a magic circle. So if you already know how to make a magic circle, just skip this part. But if you don't and you're an absolute beginner, I'm going to show you two different methods on how you can make a magic circle. The first method is an unfinished slip knot. And if you're an absolute beginner, I think that this might be a little bit easier than the other method. So what you want to do is you want to make a slip knot. Take this tail over here. I wrap it. Um, I take this tail. I hold it with my thumb and my ring finger. And then I wrap my yarn around my pointer finger and my middle finger so that there is a loop here so basically what i'm just doing is i'm making a loop like this and then i want to hold it right here where the two yarns intersect so that the loop doesn't become undone and so now this is the tail that's attached to my ball of yarn so i'm gonna insert my hook into the circle and then I'm going to turn my hook so that the little hook side can grab the yarn. And then I just grab this yarn and I pull it up a little bit, not too much. And then I like to hold my magic circle with this hand, with my right hand, so that I can just adjust my tension. But now if I were to pull this tight right now, it would become a slip knot. But instead what I'm going to do is... I'm going to chain one and now this is a magic circle. For the second method, I like to again hold this tail end with my thumb and my ring finger and then I wrap the yarn around my pointer finger and my middle finger once and then I want to wrap it twice. So the second time, I make an X under my fingers and then I bring this tail back and hold it where I was holding the other end with my thumb and my ring finger. So now on this side of your fingers, there is an X, but then when you turn your fingers on this side, you just have two lines of yarn. So what you want to do is you insert your hook under the first line of yarn that is closest to your nails, and then you go and you grab the second line right here, and then you pull it up, and now you twist it so that the loop doesn't become undone and so now looking at the tails that we were grabbing this one is just the tail from like starting the magic circle this one is the one that's attached to the ball of yarn that's right over here so what you want to do is i just remove the magic circle from my fingers and then i'm gonna use this tail end that's attached to my ball of yarn to make a chain so chain one and then you have a magic circle here i know i'm not the best at explaining how to make a magic circle so feel free to look at other videos online so that you can find the method that's best suitable for you but now i'm gonna make single crochets into my magic circle so to do that just take your hook go into the circle make sure you're going over these two strands of yarn and then Grab your working yarn and pull it up and then make a single crochet. And that's basically how you put single crochets into your magic circle. So now 
Now to make the daisy, I'm using my 25 millimeter hook and I'm using weight 200% acrylic yarn. And I'm gonna start by making the middle of the flower and I'm gonna make it in yellow. Start by making a magic circle and then putting eight stitches into your magic circle. So this is what the eight stitches look like and you can count them from here. And so now I'm just gonna pull my magic circle tight by pulling on this tail. And now I wanna join my last stitch to my first stitch so to do that I just find the first stitch right here is this V looking stitch right over here so I'm just gonna insert my hook into that it might be a little bit tight but it's okay just put your hook through it and then grab your yarn and now I'm gonna make a slip stitch and then chain one and now I can just cut this tail after you cut the tail, just pull this through and then pull it tight and we're going to crochet over this tail. You can go ahead and weave it in right now, but I find it easier to just crochet over it. It's just less work, but if you want to weave it in, then go ahead and do that. So now in the color of my petals, I'm going to start by making a slip knot. So again, to make a slip knot, just wrap your yarn around your fingers like this so that you have this loop. Grab this tail that's attached to your working ball of yarn and then pull it through the loop that you made and then pull it tight. And that's a slip knot and this one's a little bit big so what we're gonna do is put your hook through it and then you can just pull on these two ends to make it tighter. So I want to make it the same size as my hook, maybe a little bit bigger, like this. And now you can just take this off your hook and set it aside. Okay, so now grabbing the middle part of the flower that we just made, um, you can insert your hook at any of these stitches because we're going to eventually crochet into all of them, so it doesn't really matter where you start. But since I like to crochet over my tail, I prefer to start at the stitch that is right after where we fastened off. So I just put my hook through that stitch and then I put this tail over my hook just to make sure that I'm crocheting over it. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab the slip knot that I made and I put that on my hook as well. And now I'm going to pull the loop or pull the slip knot through that first stitch so that the loop is like sticking out of this end but then the little knot that we made is still at the back of it and now I'm gonna start chaining so you're gonna start by chaining three I'm gonna make a double crochet back into that same stitch so to make a double crochet wrap your yarn around your hook once and then insert your hook back into that same stitch and I'm still holding over I'm still holding this tail over my hook so that I can crochet over it but again you don't have to do that so insert your hook back into that same stitch grab your yarn and pull it through now you have three loops on your hook so yarn over and pull through two and then yarn over and pull through two and that's a double crochet and now to finish off this petal, we're going to chain three again. And then we're going to make a slip stitch back into that same stitch. Like this. So basically for each petal, we're working three stitches into one. And you're going to repeat doing that. So now to start the next petal, insert your hook into your next stitch grab your yarn and start by making a slip stitch first and then repeat the same pattern so chain three make a double crochet yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and then chain three again insert your hook back into that same stitch and make a slip stitch.
So just repeat doing this until you've made eight petals. I've just now made my last and eighth petal. To fasten off, I'm gonna insert my hook back into that very first stitch where we started working our first petal into. And I'm gonna grab my yarn and then I'm gonna make a slip stitch and then chain one. Cut the yarn and pull this tight. Now I'm just gonna weave in any ends using a darning needle, but you could also use like a smaller crochet hook for this part. But my ends were long enough for me to put through a needle, so that's what I'm doing. So I'll just grab the tails and then I'll just go through a couple of stitches just so that it's secure. It's not going to unravel either ways, but I like to do this just as like an extra safety measure. So now to make this stem, just follow the same method for all the flowers, but I'm only going to show you how to do it once. I've grabbed my 2mm hook because it's just a little bit easier to do this step with a slightly smaller hook, but it's completely okay if you don't have any smaller hooks. This is the front of my flower, and then this is the back of it once I've like weaved in all the ends. So when you look at it here, you see from the yellow part, there are these little loops. So basically we're gonna make the stem into those loops. So now take your hook and go into any of these two little loops that are facing each other. So I'm gonna go through this one and then the one that is right in front of it. And now I'm going to grab my green yarn, make a little loop like this. I'm not going to make a slip knot or anything. There's a little loop here at the top. And then I'm going to put the loop on my hook and pull it through those two yellow loops that I've picked up. And now I'm just going to make a chain and switch back to my 25 millimeter hook. And so basically now you just want to start chaining however long you want your bookmark to be. It stretches a little bit over time. So I recommend not going the full length of your book and just going a little bit shorter. But yeah, I'm going to chain I think around 40 or 45 and then I'll be back. I just chained 40 and my flower is about 15 centimeters in length. So now I'm going to fasten off. So to fasten off, I'm going to chain one again and then I'm going to cut this yarn. If you want to add a little add on to the end of your stem, like a little leaf or a strawberry or a bee, which I'm going to show you how to do later in this video, leave a longer tail, like maybe about, I want to say five centimeters. But if you don't want to add anything to the end of your bookmark, then you can just cut the tail a little bit shorter and then use a little bit of super glue at like the end right here so that it doesn't unravel. But now I'm going to take this little end from like when we started making the stem and I'm going to weave this in into the stem so that it doesn't unravel. So just take my hook and go into like the stitches one by one and pull this yarn through them. This is what the final DC looks like and I've made one in two other colors and you can basically make these in any color that you like and you can even change up the color of the center and they're really cute and you can also use these as a back charm which I think is really adorable. To make the poppy, start by making a magic circle in brown and this time we're going to put half double crochets into our magic circle. So to do that, we made our first chain that is required when you make a magic circle. So now you're going to go ahead and make an additional chain, so there's going to be two chains in total. And this is going to count as your first half double crochet. And you want to put a total of nine half double crochets into the magic circle. So that means that excluding this, you need eight more. So to make a half double crochet, wrap your yarn around your hook once, 
go back into the circle make sure you're going under these two strands grab your yarn and pull it through now you have three loops on your hook so you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three together so that's our second half double crochet we need seven more so again yarn over into the circle three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three Now pull your magic circle tight and again you want to join your last stitch into your first stitch so it's a little bit difficult to see with this color our first half double crochet was two chains so you basically want to find the second chain that's right here and then insert your hook into that second chain right there and make a slip stitch and chain one, cut this off, insert my hook into this stitch right here while also still holding this tail here and then put my slip knot onto my hook, pull it through. You're going to start by chaining three again. And then make a double crochet back into that same stitch and then make two more double crochets so we had our chain three that counts as our first double crochet and then we had three other double crochets and now you're gonna wrap your yarn around your hook and then you're gonna make four other double crochets into the next stitch so wrap your yarn around your hook insert your hook into the next stitch yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and repeat doing this three more times for a total of four double crochets And then now in your next stitch here, just make a slip stitch. So insert your hook into the next stitch, grab your yarn, and then pull it through the loop. So that's a slip stitch. And now start making double crochets again. So wrap your yarn around your hook, go into the next stitch. And so you're gonna repeat doing this where you put four double crochets into two stitches and then a slip stitch for a total of three times all around to make the petals of the poppy. And now to fasten off again, I'm gonna go back into that very first stitch and then make a slip stitch, then chain one and cut the yarn. I just weaved in all my ends and this is what the final poppy looks like. Again, to make this stem, just repeat by doing that, but this time you're gonna have to pick up two brown loops that are opposite of each other and then just start making this stem as you would. For sunflower, I made the magic circle and I put five single crochets into it. And so now this is my last stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different color of yarn so that I mark this last stitch. You could also use a stitch marker or a bobby pin. Just something so that you know that this was the last stitch of your round. And so now for round two of the center, we're going to put increases into all five single crochets. So that means that in total we're going to have 10 stitches. So to make an increase, just insert your hook into the next stitch and then make a single crochet and then go back into that same stitch and make another single crochet. So you're putting two single crochets in each stitch. So again, now our next stitch, go into it, single crochet, back 
into that same stitch single crochet again i know it's kind of hard to see it with this brown color but basically what you're doing is putting two single crochets into each stitch so now our last stitch which is in the stitch that we marked and you can just get rid of this marker right now so now you can just make a slip stitch into the next stitch and then chain one and cut your yarn and just like we've been doing before make a slip knot in your second color insert your hook into any random stitches and then put your slip knot on your hook pull it through and now we're gonna chain two and then make a double crochet back into that same stitch and then now chain two again this is what's going to make the little pointy edge of the petals on a sunflower so now double crochet again so wrap your yarn around your hook go back into that same stitch yarn over pull through two pull through two and now we're going to make a half double crochet so wrap your yarn around your hook go back into that same stitch grab your yarn three loops yarn over and pull through all three and then to finish off this petal we're gonna make one last stitch back into that same stitch which is gonna be a slip stitch so ins insert your hook back into that same stitch pull your yarn and make a slip stitch and that's one petal of the sunflower done and now to make the next petal insert your hook into the next stitch grab your yarn start by making a slip stitch and then just repeat the same pattern so chain two wrap your yarn around your hook make a double crochet then chain two again another double crochet wrap your yarn around your hook go back into that same stitch yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two and then wrap your yarn around your hook make a half double crochet back into that same slip stitch yarn over and pull through all three loops and then finish off by making a slip stitch and that's our second petal so just repeat doing this until you have 10 petals my last petal and i'm just gonna fasten off just like how we've been doing so insert my hook back into that first stitch and then make a slip stitch chain one and cut the yarn if your petals are not as pointy as you'd like them to be just squish them between your fingers a little bit and then they'll just take on the form since we made the sunflower a little bit differently, like the center is a little bit different, it has two rows, I'm going to show you how to chain for the stem. When you look at the back of the flower, um, you have the first row of the magic circle and then the second row of increases. I'm going to pick up two loops on the first row of your center. So, And then you can just start making the stem like I've showed you. For the little extra add-ons starting with the leaf start by making a slip knot in the color of your stem and now chain seven now we're gonna start putting stitches along the chain so starting from the second chain from the hook so not this one but this one we're gonna insert our hook and then we're gonna make a slip stitch so pull your yarn and then pull it through the loop and now with for our next stitch we're gonna do a single crochet so go into the next chain just make a normal single crochet 
And then next stitch, do a half double crochet. So wrap your yarn around your hook once, go into the chain, grab the yarn. Now you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull all three. And now for the next two stitches, we're going to do a double crochet. So again, wrap your yarn around your hook, go into your next stitch, grab your yarn, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and then do another double crochet into the next stitch. Now we've reached our very last chain and we're going to put a couple of stitches into this chain. Start by again making a double crochet, wrap your yarn around your hook, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and now in the same stitch, you can kind of see this hole right here. We're going to put all of these stitches into this hole. So now do a half double crochet. So wrap your yarn around your hook. Go into that same hole. Pull up your yarn. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. We're going to chain one. And then slip stitch back into that same hole and then chain one again and so now we're done with this half of the leaf so now we're gonna turn our work like this and I like to hold this tail so I just crochet it along with the leaf and now we're basically gonna mirror everything that we did on this side on the other side as well. So again, you want to start by making a half double crochet into this hole that we were working in. And then a normal double crochet back into that same hole. And now we're going to start going into the next stitches. So do two double crochets in the next two stitches. When doing this other side, I only go through one loop. So instead of sticking my hook right down the stitch here, what I do is I just pick up this loop and make my stitches into that. So making our second double crochet. You could also just go into the holes, but I like the little line that it creates when you only pick up one loop. So now make a half double crochet. And then a single crochet into the next one. And then finish off with a slip stitch. And then chain one. And you can go ahead and cut this. And then pull. And so now since I want this little pointy side to maintain its shape. I'm just gonna pull this little tail through this loop here at the very top. If you have any loose ends, just go ahead and weave them in. I'm gonna weave in this tail along this side. And for this tail, I already crocheted over it a bunch, so I can just go ahead and cut that one. Make two of these leaves, and now I'm just gonna get my flower and my darning needle and put this tail through my darning needle and basically we're gonna use this tail to join the two leaves together and the leaves have a good side and a bad side 
and I want the good sides to be facing out that means that the bad sides are going to be facing my flower and to have that arrangement you should sew them with the good sides facing each other so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to grab the two good sides and have them face each other and now I'm going to take my needle there is these three stitches right here that are the middle stitches and I'm gonna join the leaves together through those stitches so just grab my needle go through the first stitch right here and then go through the same stitch on the other leaf and pull your yarn through and now go into the middle stitch the very middle stitch here in both leaves and then again pull your yarn this last stitch and now the leaves are attached to the stem to make sure that they're a little bit extra secure i'm gonna go back into the chains that we made for the stem and i'm gonna just tie a knot so i make a loop like this over here and then i put my needle back through that loop just to make a little knot and then i pull it really tight um, but make sure that it's not too tight so that the leaves kind of curl up so just um, if that happens just pull on the leaves a little bit and then it'll get fixed and then i'm gonna weave this in into a couple of the chains of the stem and then i'm just gonna cut it for the little strawberry add-on as this tutorial that is here on youtube so it'd be a little counterproductive if i just recorded the same tutorial again just head over to that video if you want to know how to make this strawberry but i also have the written pattern right here on the screen in case you want to follow it so i just very quickly made a strawberry and its little leaves to show you how to attach the flower to it and i didn't put on the seeds for the strawberry to make the leaves make sure that you end a relatively long tail so that you can use this to sew on the leaf on the strawberry you could also glue it on but it's more secure if you sewed it on i've put the tail of the flower through my darning needle and i'm just gonna go down the middle through the little hole from the magic ring and then don't pull it too far so that the chain also comes through so i'm just gonna pull it back up a little bit and so now i'm just gonna go through a couple of these little stitches like this one for example and then go back through the chain and then go into the next stitch and then come out of another stitch it doesn't really matter where you start doing this and what stitches you go through just as long as you do it a couple times so that it's nice and secure and once i do that i like to again i'm using my hook because the tail became too short for me to put through my needle so again from a random stitch just take this tail and push it on this side and now i'm just gonna tie a knot this is the tail that comes from making the magic circle for making the leaves so i'm just gonna tie this a couple times so that it's all nice and secure and then i can just go ahead and cut these two strands together and then now you can use this tail to sew on the leaf on top of the strawberry and this is our last add-on which is a bee and for this, I'm gonna use some brown yarn and then some yellow yarn to go with the sunflower that I made. And then you're also gonna need five millimeter safety eyes, but I don't have safety eyes. I have these like button looking things instead. These are also five millimeters. So I'm just gonna glue them on once I finish the bee. And then you also need some white yarn for the wings and of course some stuffing start by making a magic circle and then put six single crochets into it and then pull it tight and i'm gonna put a stitch marker in this last stitch of my row to know where my row starts and where my row ends now i'm gonna put 
increases into all six of the stitches so in total of the next row you're gonna have 12 stitches so to make an increase again go into your stitch make a single crochet and then go back into that same stitch and then make another single crochet that's an increase Let's do that all around for this row I just took my stitch marker out because this is the last stitch of this row so made my last increase and now I'm gonna put my stitch marker back and now for row 3 we're just gonna make single crochets all around and in total you're gonna make 12 single crochets I'm about to reach my last stitch and I'm gonna show you how to change colors you're always gonna want to start changing colors on the last stitch of your previous row so that your work is a little bit neater so I just took out my stitch marker and I'm gonna make a half single crochet into this next stitch that means that I'm gonna put my hook I'm gonna pull up my yarn and now I have two loops so instead of putting these two loops onto my yellow yarn I'm gonna grab my brown yarn and gonna leave a considerable amount of tail so it doesn't unravel and I'm gonna just make a loop like this and pull it through right here and then I'm just gonna put my stitch marker back on and now we're gonna crochet for two rounds in brown and I like to again hold these two tails both the brown tail and then the yellow which I'm gonna eventually cut off but I first want to crochet over it a couple of times so that it's nice and secure so now just start making single crochets all around for this row that you're gonna have a total of 12 single crochets again so just to show you these two yarns right here I put them right over on top of my stitch and then I go into the stitch, grab my brown yarn, make a single crochet, and you see it kind of just crochets over them. So I'm just gonna do it for one more stitch and then I'm not gonna crochet over it anymore. So just continue this for two rounds and then meet me back for row six. So again, I have one stitch to finish up row five, which I'm just gonna change colors. But if you're using safety eyes, now is a good time to put them on. I like to put them between row two and row three, four or five stitches apart. You just kind of adjust where you want them to go. But I'm just gonna change colors again. So take out my stitch marker, make a half single crochet. Half single crochet is not an actual stitch. It's just what I like to call this because I have nothing better to call it. So then again with the yellow, change colors, pull this brown a little bit tight so that your tension stays the same throughout all the stitches. And putting back my stitch marker. So we're gonna crochet for two more rounds with the yellow and then we're gonna switch back to the brown or in this be it's black but you're gonna switch back to the brown and then you're gonna again crochet for the two rows and then I'm gonna show you how to fasten off your work just finished row 8 before I fasten off I'm just gonna stuff my B and you can use the end of your hook to push in the stuffing now we're gonna make six decreases for our last row so I like to do an invisible decrease. If you do a normal decrease, then just go ahead and do that. But to do an invisible decrease, you see how these V looking stitches have a front loop and a back loop. So what you want to do is grab only the front loop of your next stitch. And then again, the front loop of the stitch after that. And now you have three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull through two and then yarn over and pull through two and that's an invisible decrease so again to show you pick up the front loop and then yarn over pull through two and pull through two so just repeat doing this until you've done it six times or until you've reached your stitch marker once all that is done, just go ahead and chain one and then cut your yarn with a little bit of tail so that you can just close this shut. 
So again, I'm gonna use my darning needle, but you could still use your hook for this part. I'm gonna feed the tail through my darning needle. And now I'm just gonna go through these stitches and pull my yarn through them so that I sew it shut. Just do what I'm doing and you can again, as I've said, do it with a hook instead if you'd like. And then once you've been through all the stitches and then if you pull it, it'll just shut this closing here and now you have the body of your bee. And now for the wings, take your white yarn and again start by making a magic circle. This time you're only going to place 4 stitches into your magic circle. Also, if you're wondering how you can count the number of stitches you've put into your magic circle is if you look at these right here and count these V's or these stitches, one, two, three, four, you'd know how many stitches you've put. But now I'm just going to pull it tight and then again put my stitch marker. And now for row two, you want to do increases all along and that's going to bring your total number of stitches to 8. So just do the increase as I've taught you. So just do increases as I've showed you. And then once you finish row 2, you're done with one wing and then just make another one. Just finished all my increases. So now to fasten off, I'm going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to make a slip stitch and then chain 1 and cut the yarn leaving a bit of tail so that you can use it to sew on the wings and then just make another one of these. Just made my two wings and I'm gonna cut these tails that are from making the magic circle. If you're scared that these are gonna unravel you can just use a tiny bit of super glue or hot glue or if your yarn is acrylic, you can also melt it off. And also for my bee, I'm just going to weave in this end with my needle. So now, as I've mentioned, this is the body of my bee. The parts where I've switched colors, since they're noticeable, I'm going to use this as like the bottom of my bee and this as the top. So now I'm going to sew on the wings and I like to sew them like right in the middle which would be row five like between row five and row six so again taking my darning needle i'm gonna like do it right in the middle here and i'm gonna pull this and i'm gonna make sure that the good sides are facing up so now i'm just gonna sew on my wing in the position that i want it to be by going into a couple of these stitches and then going back into the body of the bee and then I'm gonna repeat the same thing with the other wing and I'm gonna place it right in front of this wing just sewed on the wings and glued on the eyes and now I'm gonna attach my little sunflower to my bee so again going in with my darning needle i'm gonna go right in between the wings out of the next stitch and then go back into the chains and then again go into this stitch and coming out of the one next to it pull it tight again go back into the chain and now I'm gonna make a little knot it's actually not long enough for me to make the knot with my needle so I'm just gonna use my hook so again to make a knot just pull this loop and then take your tail and pull it through and then Make sure that it's all nice and tight. And now I'm going to pull this green tail through the body of the bee. So just tucking it in. 
So that was it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, these are my socials. Make sure that you tag me because I would love to see your creations. As always, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments down below and I will see you next time. Bye!